Okay, welcome everyone. We are here for Parade Magazine's Google Plus Hangout Live on Air with Chefs Mario Batali and Michael Simon. We're very excited to be here with everybody and with your chefs as well. Um, we are here today to talk about food and football and also to celebrate Parade's cover story from last weekend, which was an awesome story written by Adam Sachs featuring Mario and Michael. Um, and Mario and Michael are joining us today live from the set of the Chew. Hey guys! Hi, how are you going? Good, how are you guys doing? We're just right. Awesome. Well, we have a bunch of questions from viewers and from readers, um, but first I just wanted to say, um, Mario, congratulations on your Seahawks. We're in. We haven't won yet, but we're closing in on it, I hope. It's very exciting. The, Brown, the Browns didn't make it? Oh, no, uh, sorry, Michael. <laughs> um, and I also first just wanted to address a sort of mini controversy that was brought up by our story last weekend. Um, there is a, the food editor of Denver Life magazine. Her name is Kimberly Lord Stewart. Um, and she took some uh, exception to something that Mario mentioned in the piece, which is essentially that he always um, plans his Super Bowl party menu around the cities that are in the Super Bowl and featuring foods that are specific to those cities. And he mentioned that Denver, not, not an ideal uh, city to build a menu around. Um, Kimberly would like to say that there are lots of excellent foods from Denver, including elk sausages, artisanal whiskey, craft beer. Mario, I wonder if you have any uh, second thoughts about that. They're not second thoughts. They're first thoughts. Kimberly, I apologize if it was misconstrued. I love every great American city and all of our gastronomic culture and fabric. What I was implying was that Denver, being a relatively modern city, has less of a tradition than, say, Boston or New Orleans to look back on. But that did not mean to say that there isn't delicious food in Denver. I love Denver, and I love its food. And if you watch on the Chew today, you'll see I kind of give a little apology and a, and a rough explanation. However, if it was misinterpreted, I apologize. But I love all the teams in the NFL, and I love all the food in the American cities. <laughs> I, I would also like to add, although they are delicious and we both love them, whiskey and beer are not technically food. <laughs> That is an excellent point. Not Thank one of the four food groups. Um, so, actually, going off of that, then, why don't you guys tell us, now that we know that it's Seattle and Denver in, um, in the Super Bowl this weekend, what are you guys serving this weekend? What's on the menu? Well, at my house, we start with a pregame of salami from Seattle, and from Denver, we do kind of a nachos with a bison sausage. Then, for the first course, it is Seattle, and we serve... Dungeness crab ceviche style in little red endive boats. The second course is a Denver. I make a, a lamb and sausage meatloaf and serve meatloaf sliders. Uh, halftime is always New York, so I serve what we call affectionately the dirty water hot dog with just mustard and sauerkraut. Third quarter is Seattle again. I'm serving Ivers clam chowder with a little bit of smoked salmon in it. Fourth quarter back to Denver for some green chili taquitos that I also demonstrated on the Chew today, but instead of using pork, I used some of the rich beef from the magnificent state of Colorado. <laughs> and then because both, uh, both Washington and Colorado have recently passed pro-weed laws, we're going for the brownies for the dessert so everyone wins. <laughs> That's awesome. No one will even know who won. It's just no, everyone will be happy. Know. Usually I have to choose a dessert team this year. So no matter who does it, we all win. This year I am um, my son Kyle and I are going to the game. Oh my god. Um, so we are gonna do that on Sunday. On Saturday though, uh, we're we're starting to get ready. We're making some kielbasa that we are gonna smoke on Saturday and in honor of my hometown, we are gonna have the Polish girl, which is a smoked kielbasa topped with pulled pork, and then topped with coleslaw and hot sauce. And in honor of the excellence of his hometown's team, there will be two people having that dish. <laughs> Just Kyle and I. It's going to be fantastic. All the Browns All fans. All the Browns left. fans together. <laughs> Well, and that's funny because actually we do have a we have a question from a viewer. His name is Ken Seaman. He's saying, um, Michael, do you recommend any comfort food for Browns fans um, for Super Bowl that will help them forget or sort of drown their sorrows um, in the the fact that of course the Browns are did not come close to the Super Bowl. Absolutely. In in honor. Hold on. 
Could you even use the words come close in the Browns and the Super Bowl? Well, it, it was <laughs> actually funny because when the article came out, um, one of my dear friends, Tony Rizzo, who is like Cleveland's predominant radio uh, sports talker and a, a huge Browns fan. He grew up with Liz, actually. Um, the, you know, it said Super Bowl and then had a picture of me in my Browns jersey. And he's like, in our 50 <laughs> years on this earth, that is the closest the Browns and Super Bowl have ever came. <laughs> but what the comfort food is, is, you know, Cleveland has a, a, a very strong Eastern European culture. And most of our markets and stuff are really based on, on that great Eastern European food. So I would get kielbasa and bratwurst and pretty much every sausage just you could get your mm -hmm. hands on and braise it in a little bit of sauerkraut. Uh, your favorite beer, like a Great Lakes beer from Cleveland would be fantastic. Um, some potatoes and just braise it all down and have a sausage, sauerkraut, and beer fest with some delicious uh, ballpark brown mustard on top. Sounds awesome. Um, we have, a, we have another question, actually, a couple questions from people who are wondering about how to make a Super Bowl party um, healthy or health conscious for, you know, if you have people coming over who are vegetarians or um, people who are watching what they eat. Um, one question is, in general, what should you serve to those people? And also we have a question, um, how do you make a healthy chicken wing? Can you make a healthy chicken wing? Yeah, well, so two well, questions. I mean, Daphne actually made a healthy chicken wing um, recently on the show where she baked it, which, I mean, takes a lot of the fat out as opposed to frying it. I would say, um, for the most part, though, vegetarians and people on, that are on a diet don't get the golden ticket to my house for the Super Bowl <laughs> party. <laughs> no, we, we always we do a big spread, and there's I, I think the key whenever you're throwing an event like this or having people over is to have as many options as possible. So, you know... Uh, like what Mario was saying earlier, how he does a different dish for every quarter, which gives you a bunch of variety through the meal. Think about variety. Think about your guests that are coming over. You invited them. You know who they are. If, if there are several vegetarians in the group, make sure you include some vegetarian dishes. There's no reason to make that person feel awkward coming over to your house. That said, I must say that some of my favorite things to eat were vegetarians. <laughs> so maybe we should just grind a few of them up and put them in the chili. Yeah. No, but there's a there's a great option. You could do you could do black bean chili. That is a vegetarian thing. You there's a lot do, of vegetarians do, in Denver. <laughs> you can you can do vegetarian hot dogs or turkey dogs. There's there's a thousand ways to get around the tricks. Just be flexible, enjoy it, and make sure that it doesn't become a problem that you're actually celebrating it, and the guests will celebrate it with you. It makes no problem at all. Yeah, I, I actually it's. Is, is a big carnivore. It's funny. My son is actually a vegetarian, and I always try to remind him, just remember, there's other delicious things that are vegetarians, too. Steers, hogs, all those things. Vegetarian. So you should feel very comfortable eating them. <laughs> that's funny. Actually, Mario, you gave us a, a recipe that's vegetarian. The uh, the baked pasta with mushrooms and, and mozzarella is vegetarian, right? And then, actually, Michael, I was wondering, can you make your pierogi lasagna without the bacon? That would make that a vegetarian. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, it could be just potato yeah. and cheese based, no bacon, no problem. I mean, yeah. certainly not what I would say is a health food, but it would be vegetarian, although not vegan friendly. Right, right. Um, we have a viewer who wrote in. His name is Andrew. He says he comes from a family um, that is both Greek and Italian, best of both worlds. Um, and he was wondering if you two had game day food that sort of joins both traditions together. Is his name Andrew Simon? <laughs> well, I, would say, I would say any Greek food that you do would bring uh, both sides together because, as we all know, the Italians all stole their best dishes anyhow. <laughs> um, no, but baked pastas. I think, you know, a lot of baked pastas are both in the style of, of uh, Italy and Greece. Like, sure. Um, no, but, I mean, what's the Italian pasta with, with the noodles and the sauce and the bechamel baked? Lasagna? No, no, no. no. <laughs> with, I'm sorry. With not not sheets. With, with uh, like, penne. Pasticciata. Same as your word. Pasticciata. pasticciata which is in, oh, right. in Greek is pasticcio. So those are two very similar pastas that I think represent both regions very well. Also, the love of lamb. Right. As we approach the uh, the middle of winter, and, there's yeah. great lamb still mm, available, delicious. and you know just lamb chops or a leg of lamb is a delicious thing that could either be Greek or Italian. And from Denver. And from Denver. Awesome. The <laughs> gate gastronomic capital of Denver. <laughs> Um, and what about if you're going to someone else's house for your Super Bowl party? Are there certain dishes that you think travel well in particular that you can sort of shove in your car and drive to your friend's house and it won't suffer? Well, I, I think the first thing to ask your friend is, 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 is it a potluck or are they organizing the dinner? Um, 
because we talk about this all the time. If it's if it's someone that's organizing the the meal, like Mario or myself or a friend of yours, you don't want to show up with food. You know, it's almost like <laughs> insulting to the guest if or, or the host if you do that. Um, if it is a potluck, I think anything in the style of a casserole uh, travels very well. The pierogi lasagna that we gave you the recipe for would travel very well. Um, but anything that is going to hold heat well and that is easily um, warmed up, you know, typically or, fry dishes don't work great. Or, or cold stuff. Right. You can bring the guacamole. You can bring the salsa. You can bring the ceviche. You can bring the tostadas. You can bring all the stuff. What you don't want to do if you're going as a guest to someone's house is bring an entire accoutrement setup where you need to take over their stove for a little <laughs> while because they probably already got it figured out. Right, and, right. And, I mean, there's tons and tons of great artisanal uh, salamis and prosciuttos like the ones that your dad makes. That would be a... In Seattle. In Seattle. Um, which would, That would be a wonderful thing to bring. I mean, you, you get it there, you slice it up, you put it on a platter, and, you know, who doesn't like delicious dried cured meat? Plus, one of the nice things, if you do bring something that isn't going to get or possibly not finished, that you can leave it for the host as a kind of an extra gift. Bring a couple extra salami and a nice piece of cheese that you don't even plan on putting on the board. It's kind of a nice host or hostess gift. Or if it's a vegan party, just bring six carrots. <laughs> <laughs> they do. They travel really well. Really well. <laughs> um, points with the vegans. I always do. <laughs> they love me. They love you chopped up on toast. <laughs> I mean, does that actually happen to you guys? Do you guys throw a party and, and some, some friend of yours will show up with, like, you know, show up with the... I can't quite imagine going to a famous chef's house and showing up with, like, you know... A, a bunch well, of food that was not cleared by the host in, in advance. We were I mean, talking about this before the show that. today. Mario and I agreed that it never happens to us. Right. Um, but, you know, Carla, oddly enough, I think it's because she's so sweet and nice. She said it happens to her all the time. Like, pastries are what she does. And she said someone came over to her house for the last party and brought their own key lime pie, which <laughs> is just weird to me. Yeah. You know, it's almost like, you know, your job as a guest is never to try to show up the host. They're nice enough to open their doors for you, have you into their house and into their family and throw the celebration, which is probably going to cost them a good amount of money to boot. The last thing that you want to do is try to show them up. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. <laughs> and actually, speaking of Carla um, and Daphne, who you brought up um, her healthy her healthy chicken wing before, um, Kathy wrote in and asked, um, what do you attribute the success of the chew to? I mean, you guys, I think... I think you you've just shot your 500th episode. Is that right? Yep. That's amazing. So what what do you think? I, I think that it, did you guys know it was going to be a huge success when it started out, and why do you think it's been such a big success? Um, I think one of my favorite friends, when he heard that I'd signed up to, and agreed to do the two, sent me a very interesting email. Said, "Batali, this is career suicide," and I still like to call him about it and see about it. I, I, it seems to be working out. The ratings seem to be doing quite well. Um, I think what the fundamental reason is, is that although we weren't friends before, however they chose and cast us, we are definitely friends now. And, and like good friends, we can call each other on our BSometers. We can bust each other's chops. We can share in each other's joys or lack of joy or failures or successes or particularly Daphne's pregnancy. It's been something that like we're almost like brand new family that really seems to get along and the chemistry is hard to replace and when you watch shows that don't seem to make it it's perhaps because the chemistry just isn't as palpable or it doesn't even exist in our case I think it just it was a it was a strike of lightning of luck but we just really enjoyed doing it and to 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 our benefit we really think it's fun so I think that really shows and I think maybe that's why the program's popular I mean kind of what you're seeing here I think is a, a, a microcosm of what the show is I mean Mario and I knew each other before the show started but we didn't know any of the other hosts, and, and we did. We just all became friends, and everybody's so comfortable. Like, if something funny happens in life, you laugh. And 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 the person that you're laughing at or with, if they're close to you, will laugh along because it's funny. And and that's what makes the show work, too. If Mario does something wrong or, or I burn <laughs> something or make a tragic dish, which fortunately very rarely happens but has happened, we can laugh about it, and um, and I think when America's watching the show, they realize that they realize that they're almost like uh, coming in to our little party every day, and and have become part of our family, and they get to kind of experience what we experience, um, and and the Chew is, I think, more than any other show that that I've watched is just so real. I mean, it's not 
scripted. It's not do this, do that. It's you're actually just watching us kind of having a dinner party every day and and cracking up along the way. And as we grow and learn from each other, you can see it, and it kind of brushes off. For example, Michael just said about 680, 690 words. There was a three-syllable word at the beginning of that. Microcosm is an impressive movement for you, Simon. You're coming down the path. I like to pretend like I don't know the big words just to make him feel better about himself. The good thing is, is my father, every day, who has more degrees of a thermometer, he'll call me up and he'll go, tell Mario you used three words out of context today. <laughs> He doesn't call me. <laughs> that's, uh, that's really funny. Tell me, I mean, that when you said uh, it doesn't happen often that you make a tragic dish, but it does happen, that makes me want to ask, what, what was a tragic dish that you made? I'll tell you mine. I, uh, I do a segment on the show called Five and Five. Um, five ingredients, five minutes, under five dollars. Hold on, hold on. Ready? Occasionally. One, two, three. Salisbury, Salisbury steak. <laughs> It needed a good nine minutes. It's more of a ten minute dish. <laughs> more of a ten minute dish. Yeah. yeah. In, in five minutes, it was a it was a tra it was raw burger it, it and was, stuff. It was my biggest culinary tragedy in thirty years of cooking. And the funny thing is, is is on Twitter sometimes when I get a tweet that says made the Salisbury steak, it was awesome. I'm like, should have had you on the show. Because, <laughs> man, did I butcher that thing. When when the five minutes was up. I'm like, usually if I need another minute, I'm like, I just finish. And I'm like, <laughs> it's bad. Just pretend. But, but they called me on it, which makes it great. Right, know? right. I was going to ask. They, they don't pretend it's good. They'll call you on it. What, well, it's only one. There's only been one, so it's not like we have a tradition wait, what is the, having no, to pretend it what, was what's good. The dish, what's the, I don't know if the, it was. Most of our shows are day and date but and live to date, but every once in a while we do some that we uh, pre-tape. Pre-tape. The, 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 that one dish you make, is, have we showed that yet? I don't know what you're talking oh, about. Oh, go boy. It was a doozy. It was, just, it well, was Almost the next week there was something the, that didn't quite work out for me, but <laughs> we haven't made a big song of it yet. Not yet, but the beauty of the, the reason I've always admired Mario as a chef and, and as a person is he's always taken the attitude that less is more, and I think it speaks so brilliantly with this food and, and really is, is, is what – uh, defines who he is as a chef. Like, there's never too much going on in a dish. He he shows incredible restraint with food, and he he made a dish last week that had about four more things in oh, it right. than it should have. With it was sausage gravy on the French toast with tomato yeah, sauce. Yeah, exactly. that's right. Yeah, that hasn't come out yet. They may never show that show. In which case, I'll be lucky. But yeah, we've all had fortunately very few of them. But everybody on the show has had one like uh -oh. blooper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, we've, we've had a couple more questions come in. They are uh, recipe related. So I know we just have a couple more minutes left. Maybe we'll just uh, do rapid fire here. Um, I know, Mario, you actually already answered this, but um, hot dogs, grilled or dirty water? You prefer dirty water, right? Uh, it depends on where I am in the middle of the winter. I definitely do them in the dirty water. But that's also because it's a reference to the world-famous culture of hot dog trucks in New York City. Right, right. And you, Michael? Um, grilled or fried. I love them fried. They get, especially if it's a natural casing dog, it just gets snappy and delicious. Yum. Deep fried, do you do it in what kind of oil? Lard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from awesome. Cleveland, man. <laughs> we not, you notice how he almost lied to you, right? <laughs> All right, I'll admit Just a minute where you thought yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seed oil. <laughs> <laughs> Canola oil. Um... Anytime, let's see, this is from Heather Livingston. Every time I cook steak at home, it turns out tough. Any advice for a tender homemade steak? I mean, chances are it's the quality of beef you're buying or the cut that you are using. Um, you know, food like anything else, you get what you pay for. Uh, but I think the biggest thing is, is don't start cooking until it comes to room temperature. Let it rest for another 10 or 15 minutes uh, before you serve it. And that will help with all those things. But typically, it's the quality of meat or the cut you're using that will make it tough. If you're looking for a really tender steak, get filet mignon. It has a little bit less flavor, but it has a definite tenderness to it because the muscle isn't used that well. For me, another example of a great steak that isn't very expensive is a skirt steak. And you cook it whole, then you slice it against the grain, serve it sliced. It's always got unbelievable flavor, and it's not tough at all. Right. And then the, I think the perfect flavor and tender steak is a ribeye. Right. Right, right, right. Um, 
Let's see here. We have Lisa Price says she has somehow ended up with tons of ravioli in her freezer, and she wonders if you guys have any um, any advice for using it up in, in ways other than sort of the obvious boiling in. Several ways. If you go to St. Louis, one of the big things they do is something called toasted ravioli. You blanch them first like you were going to boil them and cook them. Take them out, shock them in cold water, then dredge them in a little bit of egg and then in a little toasted breadcrumbs and saute them in a shallow pan with a little bit of butter or olive oil and then serve them as an appetizer, in which case a lot of people may eat five or six. You won't get rid of all of them at once. Another way is to blanch them the same way you do sauce them in the same way that you do and bake them like a lasagna or like oh, a baked pasta. You made that on cut the show. It, it was incredible. That's an easy way to use a lot because people won't be able to resist overeating and getting rid of your freezer's excess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that sounds great. Um, and finally, um, Michael, who are you rooting for in the Super Bowl? Oh, you know what? <laughs> he is going to not be happy with me when I say this, but I, you know, I would love to see Peyton Manning get one more ring. I mean, I love both of these teams. It's hard for me to pick. Uh, but, you know, to me, Peyton Manning's one of the, the greatest players to ever step uh, foot on the field, and I'd like to see him get a second ring as much as I do love the Seahawks. All right. And although I appreciate that sentiment, Peyton is by no means near in his last season. So let's give it to he's Seattle close, for once, dude. shall we? He's I mean, as old as we are. I know, but he's better than us. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you so much for your time. It's been so fun to talk to you. Go, uh, you know, have have a great have a great Super Bowl. Someone's gonna be happy between the two of you next next uh, weekend, so that's good. Um, go before, Parade Magazine. Go Parade Yay. Magazine. Yeah. Um, before I wrap this up, I just want to mention um, that the the jerseys you see on the cover here, um, Mario and Michael are wearing. They um, they were kind enough to autograph them for us, um, and you can actually enter to win one if you go to Parade's Facebook page, which is facebook.com/slash Parade Mag. And in addition, you can read Adam Sachs' great story, and you can get all of Mario and Michael's um, Super Bowl party recipes if you go to parade.com slash superchefs. Um, so thanks so much, you guys. Take care. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>